People with ADHD have poor attention and they have high levels of impulsivity. They are easily distractible. But the way that shows up is very surprising. You might think that people with ADHD just simply can't attend to anything. They really can't focus, even if they really want to. But that's simply not the case. Yes, they are distractible. Yes, they are impulsive. Yes, they are easily annoyed by things happening in the room. They sometimes have a high level of emotionality as well. Not always, but often. However, people with ADHD can have a hyper focus, an incredible ability to focus on things that they really enjoy or are intrigued by. Now, this is a very important point because typically we think of somebody with ADHD as being really wild and hyperactive or having no ability whatsoever to sit still and attend. And while that phenotype, as we call it, that contour of behavior and cognition can exist, many people, if not all people with ADHD, if you give them something they really love, like if the child loves video games or if a child loves to draw or if an adult loves a particular type of movie or a person very much, they will obtain laser focus without any effort. So that tells us that people with ADHD have the capacity to attend, but they can't engage that attention for things that they don't really, really want to do. And as we all know, much of life, whether or not you're a child or an adult, involves doing a lot of things that we don't want to do. Much of our schooling involves doing things that we would prefer not to do and sort of forcing ourselves to do it, to attend even though we are not super interested in what we are attending to. Now, you might think that people with ADHD would have really poor memories, but in fact, that's not the case. People with ADHD often can have a terrific memory for past events. They can remember upcoming events quite well. Their memory is clearly working. However, one aspect of memory in particular that we call working memory is often disrupted. Working memory is the ability to keep specific information online, to recycle it in your brain over and over again so that you can use it in the immediate or short term. A good example of this would be you meet somebody, they tell you their name, they give you their phone number verbally, and you have to walk back to your phone and enter it into your phone. People without ADHD might have to put some effort into it. It might feel like a bit of a struggle, but typically they would be able to recite that phone number in their mind over and over and then put it into their phone. People with ADHD tend to lose the ability or lack the ability to remember things that they just need to keep online for anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute or two. Okay, so a string of numbers like 643781 for most people would be pretty easy. 643781, 643781. You could probably remember that a minute from now without writing it down. But if you add one more number to that 6437813, it gets tougher. Okay, so there's a reason why phone numbers typically have seven digits in them. Of course, there's an area code, but remembering information that strings out longer than seven numbers or a sentence or two, that's challenging for most people. People with ADHD have severe challenges, even with much smaller batches of information over even much smaller batches of time. And as a final, final point, I also want to mention something about technologies that are making it harder for all of us to focus, regardless of whether or not we have pre-existing ADHD or not. You can probably guess where this is going. Everybody nowadays seems to have a smartphone. I'm sure there are a few individuals out there that don't have a smartphone. Nonetheless, most people have them. Most kids want one as soon as they can get them. And they are small. They grab our attention entirely. But within that small box of attention, there are millions of attentional windows scrolling by, right? So just because it's one device that we look at does not mean that we are focused. We are focused on our phone, but because of the way in which context switches up so fast within the phone, it's thought that the brain is struggling now to leave that rapid turnover of context, right? Many, many shows, many, many Instagram pages, many, many Twitter feeds, many, many websites, basically the whole world at least in virtual format, is available within that small box. Unlike any other technology humans have ever dealt with before, even though there are trillions, infinite number of bits of information in the actual physical world, your attentional window, that 
aperture of constriction and dilating that visual window is the way in which you cope with all that overwhelming information typically. Well, within the phone, your visual aperture is set to a given width. It's about this big. Typically, the phones seem to be getting bigger, but nonetheless, it's about that big. And within there, your attentional window is grabbing a near infinite number of bits of information, colors, movies. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a movie is worth a billion pictures. The brain loves visual motion. And so the question is, does that sort of interaction on a regular basis lead to deficits in the types of attention that we need in order to perform well in work and school relationships, etc.? And the short answer is Yes, it does appear so. We are inducing a sort of ADHD. And while the studies on this are ongoing because prominent use of smartphones really took off right around 2010, and one in particular that I'd like to highlight, one was actually carried out pretty early in 2014. This is a study that explored smartphone use. At the time, they called it mobile phone use, but smartphone use and inattention, difficulties in attending in 7,102 adolescents. So this is a huge study, a population-based cross-sectional study. And you will be probably surprised and somewhat dismayed to hear that in order to avoid this decrease in attentional capacity, adolescents needed to use their smartphone for less than 60 minutes per day in order to stay focused and centered on their other tasks. Otherwise, they started to really run into significant issues. So 60 minutes is not much. I have a feeling that most young people are using their phone more than 60 minutes per day. I know I am. I think for adults, the number is probably higher. I'm going to just extrapolate from what I read in this study. It seems that two hours a day on the phone would be the upper limit beyond which you would probably experience pretty severe attentional deficits. The brain does not do well with constant context switching, meaning it can do it, but it diminishes our capacity to do meaningful work of any other kind. I think we're all striving to do that. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I think whether or not you have ADHD or not, if you're an adolescent limiting your smartphone use to 60 minutes per day or less, and if you're an adult to two hours per day or less is going to be among the very best ways to maintain, just to maintain your ability to focus at whatever level you can now. And as I always say, most of the things that we get recognized for in life, success in life in every endeavor, whether or not it's school, relationships, sport, creative works of any kind are always proportional to the amount of focus that we can bring that activity. It is important to rest, of course, to get proper sleep, but I stand behind that statement. And I leave you with that study about attention and cell phones and how cell phones are indeed eroding our attentional capacities.